Hello, I'm Rob Witcher, and today we're going to talk about the reference monitor concept, the security kernel, and the trusted computer base. Before we begin discussing the reference monitor concept, how it relates to the security kernel and the TCB, the trusted computing base, let's first start with a bit of simpler terminology. Let's start with a subject. So what is a subject? Well, a subject is a person or a process. Something, someone or something that's trying to actively access an object. So the reason we call a subject active is because the subject is what's trying to access the object. If it's actively trying to do something. So what is the object? The object is whatever is being accessed. It could be a file, a database, a building, another process. But the defining characteristic of the object is that it is passive. It's simply being accessed for some reason. Now, if we want to have security, we can never just let any subject access any object and do whatever it wants with that. If we were just allowed any subject to access any object, we'd have no security. They could do whatever they want. So we can't allow this. Instead, what we need to do is we need to put something between the subject and the object. We need to put something in between them that's going to mediate, that's going to control the subject's access to the object. Now, this mediation here, just think of it as a black box. It can be many different things, depending on whether you're talking about logical or physical security. For now, just think of it as some sort of black box that controls the subject's access to an object. So how does this mediation know when to let certain subjects access certain objects and perform certain operations? How does it decide how to do this? Well, it decides based on a set of rules that are programmed into the mediation. So we have to come, someone has to come up with a set of rules that are going to control a subject's access to an object. Another important piece of terminology here is related to controls. Every control is going to have both a functional and an assurance aspect to the control. What does that mean? Well, the functional aspect of a control is what the control is meant to do. In this case, our control is meant to control a subject's access to an object based on a set of rules. That's the functional part of this control. What's the assurance part? Well, how do we know that this mediation, this control is actually occurring, working correctly? How could we know? How could we get assurance that it was working properly? Well, we could log and monitor exactly how this mediation is occurring and be able to get assurance that it's working correctly. So this concept of a subject accessing an object through some form of mediation that's based on a set of rules, all of which is logged and monitored, this is known as the reference monitor concept. Simple as that. Now, the RMC, the reference monitor concept, is simply a concept. It doesn't actually help us in security by itself. We actually have to implement the RMC. And whenever you implement the RMC, it's known as a security kernel. So remember that a security kernel is simply the implementation of the reference monitor concept. A security kernel has to demonstrate three properties to be a good, to be considered a good security kernel. The first property is what's known as completeness. And completeness has to do with whether or not a subject is able to bypass the rules. If a subject was able to bypass the mediation, was able to bypass and directly access an object, would there be any point in having the security kernel? Obviously not. So completeness means that a subject is not able to bypass the mediation. The subject is forced to, has to go through the mediation in order to access the object. The next property is what's known as isolation. And it relates to who is allowed to change the rules. Who's allowed to make modifications to these rules over here? And if just anyone was allowed to modify the rules, could we ever have good security? 
Could we make sure? I mean, if, if just anyone was allowed to make whatever changes they want to these set of rules, they could give themselves access to anything they wanted. So isolation means that the rules are tamper-proof. Only authorized individuals are able to change these rules. And the final property is verifiability. And that relates to that assurance aspect I just explained, which is how do we make sure that the security kernel is actually working properly? That it's appropriately controlling subjects access to an object. And the way that we do that, the property is called verifiability, and we achieve it through logging and monitoring what's happening here. So these are the three properties that every good security kernel should demonstrate. Now, the final bit of terminology that we're going to cover here is what's known as the TCB, the Trusted Computing Base. And how does it fit into what we've already talked about here? Or more specifically, how does what we've talked about here fit within the TCB? Because here's the definition of the TCB, the Trusted Computing Base. The TCB is all of the components, all of the parts within an architecture that are responsible for security. So let's look at a few examples to illuminate this. Think of something like a laptop. And if you were to look at a laptop and you were to say, okay, out of all the pieces, the, the entire architecture that makes up this laptop, what are the pieces that are specifically responsible for security within that architecture? It would be things like the anti-malware system, the login mechanism, the host-based firewall, uh, the logging and monitoring capabilities on the device. All of these would be components within the TCB, the trusted computing base of that laptop. So the TCB of that laptop would be all of those security features of the laptop. Now let's think a little bigger. Instead of just a single laptop, how about an entire network, like an entire corporate network? What would be the TCB of an entire corporate network? Well, it would be all of the components within that network that are responsible for security. Things like the firewalls, the IDS IPS systems, the security information and event management, the SIM systems. All of these would be components, part of the TCB for that network. And let's think even bigger. What would the TCB be for an entire organization? So if you were to look at the architecture of an entire organization, what would be the components within that architecture that are responsible for security? Because that's the TCB. Well, if you were to think about an entire organization, you'd probably want to start at the top. You'd want to think about, do we have the right policies, procedures? Is there the right accountability and responsibilities assigned to the right people? Is there the right tone from the top of the organization to then implement all of the controls beneath that? Having in place the right access management controls, onboarding controls, procurement controls, change management, incident management, configuration management, BCP, DRP, all of these components responsible for security would be parts of the TCB for the entire organization. And so how does the RMC and the security kernel fit within the TCB? Well, oh, any architecture is going to need many, many different mechanisms. They're going to control access to parts of that architecture. And so as there's going to be in any system, any architecture that you look at, there's going to be multiple security kernels implemented. And so the RMC security kernels are subcomponents essentially of the TCB. One final useful hint I'll maybe give you here, something to remember is that when you're looking at the TCB, the trusted computing base, watch out for different language around this. Anything that refers to the totality, the collection, the assembly of all the parts, the components that are responsible for security within an architecture, that will be the TCB.